does look like a part of Florida will deal with some major winds from this. It's still questionable as to a direct hit if it's going to be a few hundred miles off of our coast, but models do want to bring it to South Florida first and then ride it north. Now, earlier models were showing this thing moving right through the middle of the state through Monday and Tuesday. Now they're shifting east. We'll show you that. But look at this eye. That eye is about 30 miles wide. The whole thing about 600 miles wide. So a huge storm historic. In fact, 2005 Wilma was the last time we had a storm this strong with winds up to 180 miles per hour, putting it at category five status. Of course, that's the top of the tier here. Moving west quickly at 14 miles per hour, soon to impact the Leeward Islands as a Category 5 and staying a Category 5 as it moves just to the north of San Juan, Puerto Rico. So certainly a real issue for the entire island of Puerto Rico as we head into tomorrow. So some real concerns there. And then it moves in areas just north of Hispaniola, not impacting land very much there. Of course, we've got the mountain ranges that oftentimes when storms move over, they weaken. Not much of that happening here as it will have a lot of water to move through a category four likely through the end of the week and into the weekend and notice this latest track as of 11 does have this thing shifting ever so slightly to the north and that's in trend with what's happening with those models. Here is the track at the end of the five day period here putting far southern Brevard County in the cone as well as southern sections of Osceola County. Now this of course will shift and we hope the trend will be that this will shift off to the east and that will be out of the cone. Now there's not a huge chance for that, but there is a chance for it and I'll explain why. There's that big area of high pressure that's been a mechanism to move this system, guiding it as you see those winds around that big area of high pressure, sending this westerly and that's what will happen as we head into the next several days and then it makes that sharp turn to the north and it could make that turn because of a front that's well to our north that will eventually try to move in. That could shift Irma farther off to the east. Now these computer models are different than the ones that we were showing earlier this morning because now notice they're much farther east than we saw in central sections earlier. So with more of an easterly jaunt of these models and that slight trend with the track, we hope that we'll see this trend continue and we'll see more of these models shifting east because of the proximity of that front. Still a big question, but if we can shift this east and shift that track east, things could be better for us. We've got to watch it closely. And of course, lots will change in the coming days. We also have brand new developed as of 11 o'clock this morning, Tropical Storm Jose with winds at 40 miles per hour behind that system. Back close to home, we're pinpointing rain popping up in Volusia County for New Smyrna Beach, then back down south of there for Merritt Island, Cape Canaveral, and a few pop-up showers for Satellite Beach in Melbourne. Not a lot of lightning, but plenty of warm air. Temperatures near 90. Here's a look at your pinpoint accurate forecast. Your forecast brought to you by Del Air Heating and Air Conditioning. So we warmed to 93 today with rain chances at 60%. As we head into the afternoon and evening, the sea breezes come together. We fire up those storms much like yesterday. So be ready for some heavier downpours for the drive home. Highs today along the coast near 90 inland approaching the mid 90s. Here is a look at your seven day forecast and notice we do see those rain chances high at 60% across the board. And it all depends on tracking Irma for Saturday, Sunday and Monday we could bump rain chances up depending. All right, Troy, thank yeah. you so much.